My name is Dr. Praveen K.S. I'm a consultant neurosurgeon with Sri Shankar Cancer Hospital and Research Center. I've been here since the inception of the hospital. And then uh, today we are going to be talking about one of our uh, patients who we treated very recently, uh, a three-year-old child uh, who had presented with a brain tumor in the back side of the brain, the area called as a cerebral endocrine stem. She had undergone surgery elsewhere where they had done a biopsy and we knew the histopathology of the tumor, we knew the biopsy report of the tumor and she was sent here for further therapy and the pediatric oncologist Dr. Anand who assessed her initially found that not only did she have an infection in the brain requiring long-term antibiotics for about say two weeks, she had what is called as brain fever or meningitis. She also had a very large residual tumor uh, which was too big uh, to be given radiation or just to go away with chemotherapy. And also the child had uh, severe symptoms pertaining to the tumour in the form of severe headache, vomiting, not able to eat, not able to walk properly and the child was always irritable and drowsy. Uh, at this stage, I was called in to see the patient. Now, after uh, uh, detailed assessment and going through all her CT and MRI of the brain, we found out that indeed she had a very large tumour in the area called as a cerebellum which is the back of the brain very very close to the uh, brain stem or the medulla oblongata which is a very critical area of the brain the tumour was almost 6 to 7 centimetres large it had not only produced uh, local pressure effects but it had also produced severe uh, water collection in the brain Though they had put in a VP shunt or a drainage shunt for the hydrocephalus or the water content, the shunt was not working and there was excessive accumulation of the water. During such times, uh, I was called in to see the patient and then plan for surgical removal of the tumour. At this time, we realised that the tumour removal in this patient is challenging for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was only a three-year-old child with the entire blood volume being very, very low and then any amount of excessive blood loss from the tumour might be detrimental to her uh, life itself. Second thing is, this is a child who has already undergone surgery in a critical part of the brain and likely that there are going to be a lot of additions or scarring of the normal brain with the tumour, making this entire surgery dangerous for not only the local region but also the life of the patient. Third reason is the patient had just then recovered from brain fever or meningitis which is also likely to increase the amount of scarring in and around the tumour, making excision of the tumour more difficult. Here also we have a child who has severe waist pressure symptoms in the form of headache, vomiting and also inability to walk, thereby signalling that the pressure of the brain, overall pressure of the brain is likely to be very high and uh, we will have a huge problem on our hands if we are not prepared beforehand. So hence we uh, decided to take up uh, for surgery for debulking of the tumour and we went and prepared in the form of, we prepared what is called as a small safety bar hole in the region of the tumour itself where if the brain pressure increased during surgery we could easily put in a tube to drain out the water content of the brain as the previous shunt was not working. Thereby the brain would become relaxed and we will have some amount of time before we could uh, start dissecting the tumour from the brain and then remove it. So we also had adequate blood arranged. We had Dr. Anand who had prepared the patient excellently in the form of breathing exercises and as also the antibiotic coverage was excellent. And our anesthesia team did an excellent job in uh, giving her uh, good and adequate anesthesia. The positioning was done and we took up for surgery. During surgery, as expected, we found that the previous surgery was an inadequate one in the form that the bone opening was a very small opening where the tumour was spreading even underneath the bone and unless we remove that part of the bone to expose the tumour, there was no way we could remove the entire tumour. So not only did we enlarge the bony opening, we also carefully dissected the tumour from the surrounding brain and safely excised it. So at the end of the surgery, we were very happy because the brain was very relaxed and there was no residual pressure inside. And uh, But we also had one more problem at hand. We realized that the amount of bone removal that the previous uh, surgery had caused and also the additional bone removal, it was difficult to piece together the bone pieces and then put it back. But if we didn't replace it, there would be a, a significant amount of bony defect 
at which stage uh, postoperatively the child could go on to continue having headaches and also it's a growing child so we had to cover up that part of the brain for her so instead what we did was we reconstructed her part of the skull using a titanium mesh where we pieced it together and then we protected the uh, brain from getting exposed to the surroundings by replacing that part of the bone which was damaged with a pure titanium mesh not only is this mri compatible but it will also provide adequate protection to the underlying brain post operatively the child recovered very well in fact on the table we were able to take out the ventilator tube and child started moving both the hands and legs and started crying for her mother the first post operative day we did a post operative imaging which to our much delight awaited delight showed us that the entire tumor had been removed and also post subsequent screening mri of the brain as well as the spine revealing that there were no further tumor seedlings in the spinal cord which is quite common in these kind of patients the final histopathology was reported as medulloblastoma which is one of the common tumors to occur in this age group luckily it was one of those good risk patients and dr anand took it upon himself to provide adequate adjuvant therapy in the form of radiation and chemotherapy as per the recommendations the child complied with all these post operative uh, advice and started recovering very well initially she used to be very drowsy very irritable would not meet the eyes of the surgeon and would hide behind the mother crying irritably but post operatively there was a sea change in the behavior of the child and the child started become very playful and she would play with me mostly in the ward in the post operative period while she was waiting for the suture removal and she was interacting with the surrounding staff in a very very genial manner and i am also told that uh, the child completed the radiotherapy and the chemotherapy i have seen her recently she has gone back home and uh, she is now a very very happy child i thank the team of pediatric oncology team here dr anand his team of staff nurses his uh, registrars the anesthesia team to have uh, provided such a wonderful environment for the child to have recuperated in thank you